When the COVID-19 pandemic hit, thousands of pilots lost their jobs. Some elected to retire, others left the aviation industry for good and started in other professions. I started a YouTube channel, and Nicholas Dufton wrote a book. Then he sent a copy to me and asked me to review it. That was a bold move because I can be terribly honest. Hi, my name is Magnar Nordahl. I'm an airline captain and instructor. In this video, I will review Flying Patterns by Nicholas Dufton. With more than 20 years of experience as a pilot, instructor and examiner, Nicholas decided to write a guide to help pilots prepare for simulator checks. The project evolved into something much more. What you see here is a user manual for pilots covering themes he sometimes are uncertain about, for example fuel planning, use of minimum equipment list, and how to make our briefings more effective, as well as humans factors like leadership, decision making, and most important, how to avoid making errors. Each chapter starts with a review of a high profile accident such as Colgan Air Flight 3407 or Asiana Flight 214. Then Nicholas explains why the pilots reacted as they did. And I promise you, some of what he tells might surprise you. Because sometimes the human brain behaves very different from what you expect it to do. According to Professor Steve Peters, the brain has a rational part and an emotional part. Nicholas calls them the human part and the animal part. The human part is intelligent and logical. The animal part is instinctive and emotional. The human part has knowledge about regulations, operation procedures, technical systems, limitations and so on. If an aircraft system fails, for example a generator, the human part of the brain is trained to check the indications, analyze the problem, try a reset if it's allowed, and then apply the appropriate checklist. In time-critical situations, like engine failure at takeoff, or you have a stall warning, there is little time to assess the situation. We must act immediately. This is when the animal part can be useful. It can be trained to act when we experience certain situations. Those procedures are called memory actions and must be known at all times. The only way to manage this is through training and repetition. Not only during your typewriting course or before you simulate the shake, but as a constant repetitive learning process. Because when you are prepared, you will overcome the startle effect much more easy. Even Sully experienced the startle effect, but it didn't take long before he started to act. Ignition start. I'm starting the APU. Nicholas Stefton calls memory actions for if-then procedures. If something happens, then we do this procedure. When something happens, our brain automatically starts to search for a procedure that fits the perceived pattern. Then we follow that procedure. When accidents happen, it's usually because the pattern we selected was similar, but not the same. How many of you have learned to recover from a stall warning with minimum altitude loss? By adding power only? In a Cessna 172 at 2000 feet? In his book, Nicholas tells the story about Pinnacle Airlines Flight 3701. It was a Canadair CRJ-200 regional jet on a position flight with the only two pilots on board. The pilots decided to climb to the maximum operating altitude, which is 41,000 feet for this aircraft, of flight level 410. During the last part of the climb, they had to use vertical speed mode to get up. And this caused the speed to decrease from 203 knots to 163 knots. 
After the aircraft had leveled off, the airspeed continued to decrease. Because the engines were not able to produce enough thrust in the thin air. When the speed has decreased to 150 knots, the stick shaker actuated. Pilot flying responded by pulling back on the control column. The stick shaker and the stick pressure actuated two more times. And again, the pilot flying pulled back on the control column. As this happened, both engines flamed out. The crew failed to recover from the stall warning. And they failed to declare emergency until it was too late. And they failed to follow the procedure for engine restart. And eventually, the aircraft crashed, killing both pilots. The accident report concluded that the probable causes were the pilot's unprofessional behavior, deviation from standard operating procedures, and poor airmanship, which resulted in an emergency from which they were unable to recover. When the stick shaker activated, the pilot flying used the procedure the animal part of his brain had learned during initial training, add power and pull yourself out of the situation. But this doesn't work at high altitudes. After this accident, and accidents like Colgan Air Flight 3407, the stall recovery procedure has been changed. And now it's as following. Push the control column forward to reduce the angle of attack. Then add power as required. Some aircraft types also require you to extend the flaps. You must never retract the flaps. And this procedure works with all aircraft types at all attitudes and altitudes. The video is a time lapse from a flight that didn't go as planned. When we leveled off at our cruise level, we suddenly received several alerts and the autopilot is connected. The indications were confusing. It appeared that we had an electrical bus failure, but this shouldn't cost an autopilot to disconnect. There were some other indications that didn't add up as well. I have been instructor on this airplane for some years and I know which system should have been affected by that particular bus failure. But this didn't follow any pattern I had seen before. Our destination did not have maintenance service, while the airport we departed from was our maintenance base. After analyzing the situation, we decided to turn back. So we informed ATC, started on a 180 turn, did the relevant checklists, informed the cabin crew, prepared the approach, briefed the passengers, and I even had time to enjoy the scenery outside the window. You will notice that the flight is a little more choppy. And the reason is that the autopilot is more accurate than me. By reading this book, I have learned a few new things. For example, what to do if the elevator jams during rotation at takeoff. Imagine that you had to push the column forward, but it has no effect and the speed is decreasing very quickly. If that happens, then apply up to 70 degrees bank to offset the lift vector and allow the nose to drop. First you fly. Then you troubleshoot. I fly ATR-72. In this situation, the procedure will be to call push-push to the other pilot. By applying opposite forces on the control column, the link between the left and right elevator will be disconnected, and the other pilot will be able to control the aircraft. To sum it up, Flying Patterns is a well-written book, and I recommend it. The if-then procedure is a useful tool that can be implemented by every pilot together with discipline, airmanship and common sense. On the back cover, it's written, all pilots should have a copy in their bookshelf. 
I disagree. It should be in your flight bag and you should read it when you have a night stop or other break from your duty. To order the book, follow the instruction in the description below here. And that's all for this time. Please support my channel by clicking like and all that. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day and happy learning.